As we turn the corner to Western Michigan, one final look after watching Iowa Iowa State back on tape following the game on Saturday. My overall takeaways and some key numbers that stand out through two weeks of the season. We'll talk about it in just a second. But first, as always, want to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Iowa Floor Covering and their Tough Core Click Together 4.5 millimeter waterproof vinyl flooring. It's available at $269 per foot with self installation. They are down in Bondurant. Check them out at iowafloorcovering.com slash DIY and the Scent Nutrition, their new agaricon mushroom powder, their lion's mane mushroom powder. They've also got their algae oil DHA, their organic uh, ground coffee. You can also get it in whole bean form. Again, go to scentnutrition.com. Use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your order. Again, that's the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your order. So after further review, Iowa defeating Iowa State 20 to 13. I'm not going to be grading out. I know I handed out some grades last week. I'm not going to be doing that for certain positions this week, but I do want to highlight some key stats that I've kind of picked apart. I did watch the game back and felt pretty much the same as I did when I was there in person. I still think there's clearly a lot of room to improve in the run game, but I stand by what I said after the game. This is a better defensive front than Iowa faced in week one. And they ran the ball pretty much the same as they did week one, minus the big play, the 59-yarder. And you can't take that away from the play-by-play. You can't take that away from the the stat sheet, the box score. That was part of the game, the 59-yard bust by Jazz Patterson. But Iowa averaged 3.9 yards per rush. Compare that to around 2.4 against Utah State in, uh, in week one. So obviously an improvement there. Even if you were to take away that 59-yard rush, which you can't do that, Iowa still approximately two yards per rush. That's not good against Iowa State. The rest of those rushes, again, just two yards per rush. But there were too many times where Caleb Johnson was hit in the backfield. And I do think, despite Caleb Johnson's size, that Jazz Patterson's downhill running style and his willingness to accept contact and look for contact and hit the hole hard, I think gives them a better chance to get those rushing numbers up. And those rushing numbers are really important because Iowa, their offense is really uh, hinging on can you stay ahead of the chains and not fall behind? You know, it's first down and 10, all of a sudden it's second and 15, second and 16. Not to say it's over, but you're virtually done at that point. And especially with Cade McNamara's inability to scramble right now, that's just one less element of the offense. Hopefully he's getting to the point where he'll be ready to, you know, use that QB sneak, scramble if he needs to uh, even more. I will say the Iowa defense really impressive against ISU allowed just 2.8 yards per rush. Really good number. I know those are young backs at Iowa State and a couple new pieces up front for the Cyclones. But keep in mind, against Utah State, Iowa did allow 4.8 yards per rush. Now, some of those numbers, a lot of those numbers came late in the game, and Iowa was kind of sagging off, letting Utah State keep the ball in play. The clock, of course, kept running. But Iowa State did a little of that late in the game as well as they were down two scores. But the 2.8 yards per rush, The defense was really good. I thought the front four was active. They didn't get home much. They haven't really been getting home at all. Uh, Both of these teams have done a pretty good job protecting their quarterbacks, although Cooper Lagasse, week one for Utah State, they were just getting the ball out quick. I was really close, but I know Kirk Ferentz mentioned during his weekly availability on Tuesday that the way Iowa State plays, it's sometimes hard to generate sacks, but if you can generate pressure and cause disruption, you're going to be happy. I think Kelvin Bell, Phil Parker, and company will be happy are happy once they look back at that tape uh, from Saturday. How about this? Seven penalties charged against Iowa week one against Utah State. Zero against Iowa State. Zero. So, of course, no accepted penalties. That's good news. Iowa's had just one turnover combined in the first two games. Remember, that was a pick that probably, well, most definitely should have been called pass interference. In fact, Nico Ragaini was publicly reprimanded today by the Big Ten Conference for making some statements on Tuesday regarding the officiating. That was a ridiculous miss where he basically has jersey tugged to where he basically fell down. It was picked off by Jeremiah Cooper, his third pick of the Cyclones' young season. But again, one turnover combined in those two games. I thought Cade was really good. Cade right now is throwing just 55% completion percentage. But keep in mind, he missed a lot of time at the end of fall camp. Guys like Seth Anderson were injured during spring. Caleb Brown wasn't here during the spring. I'm not making excuses for the offense, but I still love the composure that Cade shows in the pocket, and I still feel comfortable every time he takes the snap 
that he's going to make a good decision. Now, he missed some throws on Saturday. Went back and, again, watched the film on Fox. He missed Seth Anderson on a, on a deep ball, missed Deontay Vines on a go route, had a play in the first half to Luke Lachey toward the boundary that would have advanced the chains through that a little long. Pretty good throw down in the end zone on that north end zone for Iowa State to Luke Lachey, and it was really good coverage by the Iowa State DB. But my point is, yeah, he's around 55% for these first two games. I think those numbers will go up as he gets healthier. And I think Western Michigan, assuming he plays, which it sounds like he's going to, is an opportunity to really get those numbers up. Iowa is just over 30% on third down so far offensively. And that's for both games. They're basically identical on third down. And part of that is, again, staying ahead of the chains. Can you create more third and short opportunities? I would not be surprised if we see a heavier dose of Jazz Patterson. I don't know if Leshawn Williams is banged up right now. He just got one carry on Saturday. Don't be surprised if we see a heavier dose of Jazz Patterson on earlier downs. Perhaps that will end up being uh, how Iowa kind of kickstarts the run game. Obviously, the guys up front uh, have to play well, but Jazz's ability to, again, get downhill quickly, I think will help them, even though Caleb Johnson has him in the size category. So uh, overall, I mean, again, I just think that we saw steady improvement because this was a better team, especially on defense. This is a better team than Utah State, and Iowa basically did the same thing uh, on the ground, except they also busted one for 59 yards. They used the counter plays a lot. That was based purely on scheme and opponent. And the defense just looked a lot better. I thought Cooper DeGene was really, really good. Nick Jackson played a lot better in coverage, and he's been forced into coverage. These teams have spread Iowa out. How about Iowa State? They had like four catches to their wide receivers week one against you and I. They had 20 wide receiver receptions on Saturday, 20, and yet they still lost. In fact, Iowa State for the game uh, out first downed Iowa 19 to nine. But this is kind of what Iowa does. They spread, they're going to try to spread Iowa out, but they keep everything in front of them. Of course, Sebastian Castro with that huge 30 yard interception returned for a touchdown. So we'll see what Western Michigan does this week. They like to blitz. As far as Iowa's defense is concerned, I have a hard time seeing Western Michigan do much of anything. They scored just seven points on the road at Syracuse this last week. I saw steady improvement when I watched the game back on Fox, Iowa and Iowa State. Steady improvement from both sides, especially the defense and special teams, was really good. Some minor quirks week one, right? Uh, but week two, really good. Logan Lee gets the block field goal. Cooper DeGene was solid returning punts. We're still waiting to see him break one off. And uh, we did see Caden Weijin work in on kick returns late uh, on Saturday. Of course, kick returns have kind of become a lost art in college football. But uh, Drew Stevens was fabulous. Torrey Taylor had a big day as well. So again, I thought I'd give my kind of after further review rundown after watching the game back because I was at the game on Saturday, finally getting to watch the game completely through. And I'm pretty consistent with my initial observations. I just think we saw steady improvements and I can see why Kirk Ferentz is so positive. They've got work to do. We hope Cade gets healthy quickly, but this weekend could very well be a coming out party and Iowa should average four plus yards per carry on the ground against the Broncos. Appreciate you tuning in for another segment here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Stay tuned. More stuff coming. Preview for Iowa, Western Michigan. I got my picks dropping here in the coming days. We got some basketball stuff, recruiting news, all kinds of stuff. Keep it locked right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. We'll talk to you soon.